The following show features episodic breakdowns of jackass, either performed by professionals or under the supervision of professionals. For your safety, avoid listening to this podcast at all times. Hi, I'm Mikey Aaronworth. I'm Jason Wellwood. And I'm Chris Aaronworth. Welcome to Jackass. Welcome to Jackass, the podcast where we're on a path of destruction through every single episode of Jackass. We are just three, but today two lifelong fans of the show reliving the belly laughs, bad ideas, and broken bones. We're back with the Wild Boys because yeah, no we one are, is wilder than me. The you? Well, I am are a, wild a Wild Boy. boy? Oh, boy. okay, okay. I, I feel okay. like I'm an honorary Wild Boy. You know what? I usually like to uh, take a big old shit over everything you say on this podcast especially yes, early on but i you know what you're not wrong i i can see you being an honorary member of of the wild boys yes the dreams <laughs> finally come true um we should say before you get to your part chris uh jay is not joining us today he's a little bit under the weather uh so it's just me and chris mikey and chris the two brothers the two brothers. wild boys Psh, little props over there if you're watching on youtube take it away chris um so this is season two, episode three of The mm-hmm. Wild wow Boys, and it came out on May 9th, 2004. Interesting fact, Chechnya President Ahmed Kadriov is killed in a landmine bomb blast under a VIP <laughs> stage during a World War II memorial. Jesus Christ. You okay. don't remember that fun fact? There's a... Wait, I th- I figured... I thought you did say that. When, when else did you use that one? So it, it got me thinking. When I typed it in, and I'm looking, doing my research and whatnot... I it made me realize. Don't you remember when we were kids? This is like when we were watching this. It was like when it was actually on TV and when TiVo was still around. This was before it right. was called PVR. It was TiVo, and we would TiVo Wild Boys and Viva La Bam. They was they, they were they ran back to back if I remember correctly. So right. when I saw it, but the weird part is, is like how the hell haven't I gotten over like an overlap already? That's a good question. Am I, I just know. like did I just completely? Butcher the dates well, before until then, or where do you go for your facts? Are you looking them up online, or are you just rain manning it? No, well, I mean, sometimes I rain man it, but for the most part, for the most part, there's like the site called like Rebel News. It's a nice oh. right wing, right wing news <laughs> platform. Just, Jesus Christ! Yeah, um, yeah. No, no. I, in Breitbart, I use a lot. No, no. Um, I, I could. I knew that about you. You're wearing that Breitbart T-shirt <laughs> that uh, that you begged for for Christmas. Um, by the way, how's your uh, Alex Jones plushie doing that you sleep with every night? <laughs> Oh, every time, every time you like squeeze him, he's got one of those voice of act things that says Sandy Hook wasn't real. Sandy Hook wasn't real. <laughs> His face just gets more and more red, red every time. Yeah, 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 yeah. How interesting was it seeing him, Kanye, and those other people doing doing a debate the other day? And he was actually the voice of reason for these people. It Did is, you see man, that? The weird- Kanye, the weirdest thing about Kanye is he's going around to all these people who are deplorable and they're trying to rein him in. It I'm like, what so the fuck insane. is going on? Like yeah. Alex Jones, like you, there's a moment where he kind of realizes like, oh my God, I need to be the crazy. fan favorite here. Like, I'm, <laughs> and, and he gets so into it. It was actually hilarious to see. But anyways, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Before we get into things, uh huh. it was interesting. I, it's something I think that, you know, the listeners should even give it, give it a listen. I'm very curious to see feedback on this because I had very mixed thoughts about mm. this whole situation um steve i've literally listened to every single steve podcast from day one till now it's wild, you know it's wild like, run? it was it was rare to start at episode number one so i literally listen to it every single sure. week i he remember had, that i remember very early on you being like you know steve has got a podcast it was and, week one yeah 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 um this first this last episode he released is the first time he's never had a guest on and it was saying like the, the caption of it was like steve was ashamed of like who he became or something like that i'm like this is weird um, it was basically like an apology podcast shitting on himself, but also not. It was very weird. Like, Can I guess what he was apologizing yeah, yeah, for? Yeah, yeah, like Because this is big in the Jackass community and the Jackass Discord server, which I've talked about on this podcast before. And if you want to be involved in the, the in the Jackass Discord server, it's invite only, but you can send us an email, jackasspod at gmail.com. Just prove that you're interested and you're not a bot and we can help you out. But a lo- what a lot of people talk about in that is, you know, speaking of the Alex Joneses of the world, is Steve-O is often so desperate to have a guest on the podcast that he has people who are a little bit less reputable and have done some shitty things in their in their in their time and steve-o kind of gives them a platform and a lot of people are like not aligned with that is that kind of what he was apologizing for or no no and i have no idea where they're coming after with that like that's oh, really? pretty like pretty ridiculous like i can't think of a person he had like david dub drubnik on before he got like 
booked for like his before he got canceled for doing all that weird shit so like nobody knew he was still like a main guy like maybe if you go and look back there might have things that happened to people since but like he said he gets great guests as far as i'm concerned basically what what the main issue was is is it was there's like four or five things but one of the things is he, he was getting accused for hucking like all his his uh promo stuff like trying to sell everybody oh, okay. on everything all the time which sure he definitely is marketing himself and he always has products going out and this and this and this and this and people are like you sold out da 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 to me number one i i bought his books they're great books i bought his hot sauce it's a great hot sauce uh -huh. you know like uh the skateboards look nice i didn't buy any of those but people don't realize like you I, you're starting to see these certain things like in jackass where you're looking at a lot of the even in the new guys even nowadays they're kind of broke you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Steve-O Steve dedicated his life to beating the shit out of himself, entertaining us all for so long. And the only way he's really making any good coin is is by by selling his merch. You know what I mean? Touring, doing all this stuff. He's a hardworking guy. So, like, he can't be doing this shit forever. So, like, I don't understand why people are pissed off that he's trying to sell stuff, especially that it's usually good product. Even the ones he advertises on his podcast, he was apologizing for doing podcast advertising almost. And I'm like, dude, my tushy is the greatest fucking invention I've ever had. You, you say that all the time, you know? I, lo I love Tushy. No, I, that if that's what people are complaining there's, about. There's another thing, here's, too. Here's, but. So let me address that first, and we'll get into Wild Boys uh, Season uh, uh, 2, Episode 3 in a second here. But if you're out there and you listen to a podcast or consume content that someone you like puts out and you get upset that they advertise to you in the process of that, you can go fuck yourself, especially when they're giving you, out a free product. <laughs> you're not paying for it. They're putting so much time and effort into it. You're getting something out of it and you're pissed off that you have to press skip three times on your podcast app to get to the other side of the advertisement. Sincerely, go fuck yourself if mm -hmm. you're complaining about wow, that. Mikey That's turned into ridiculous. me. You're growing some balls, Mikey. I like it. <laughs> It's absurd. Why Why do you expect it for free? Don't ever do that. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Steve was dedicated his life to this pursuit now of the podcast and of, of being this kind of branded person. He has to make a living off of it. Mm -hmm. The fact that you know his name and the fact that you love him is a testament to what he has given to you. And if you can't give back by passively listening to a minute's worth of advertisements, go fuck yourself. It's yep. that's so stupid. Yeah, I mean, I could I could get into the other thing, or it might be something if you ever want to give it a chance and listen to it, and then we kind of come out with official jackass mm -hmm. uh, public Statements? service announcement statement. Sure. Exactly. I don't know, but yeah, no, there's a whole thing with like uh, they were kind of he had Zach Holmes on, and that was one of my most interesting episodes. I learned a lot about the guys I didn't realize, um, but he got accused big time of like bullying Zach on the podcast, which. To be honest, they were definitely a little harsh. Like, I remember listening to it being like, yo, man, this guy's like sitting here taking that with a smile. But like, it was from a good place. Do you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But anyways, um, I just, to me, it just feels so, it's, it goes back to what I said my biggest criticism lately of Steve-O has been, where he's, and this is, I guess, what makes him so great at the same time is he needs to appease people. It's like a drive that drives right. him inside. He does not like not he's being He's an entertainer. Yeah. He's an entertainer. So... When, when I was saying he's, he's like turned like all like lefty and he's like pro this and activist this and da 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 da. And we're uh, to me, I'm like, yo, Steve, -O, you're, you're, it just didn't seem authentic and genuine. And then mm -hmm. coming out with this apology statement for not doing anything wrong, essentially, it's just so anti Steve -O from the grassroots, which it felt, it actually felt more contrived than anything else. I was more mad about him apologizing mm. in that way. Like, it's very interesting. You got to kind of listen to it. I, I to have know to listen to it about, to, yeah. get, to get that side of it. I, I believe that Steve-O genuinely believes the things that he says, you know, I, that that tend to be a little bit more left leaning. And, and no, I'm not. I'm not necessarily and, talking about that. Like, it's, it's hard for me to phrase. It, no, but, I, I understand what you're saying, because here's here's the the and you know what? I don't even mind getting into this because this is jackass related. Uh, uh, and without Jay, the content focused on Wild Boys will be a little bit uh, shorter anyway. Way. but jackass has always been unapologetic balls to the wall hurt your friends and hug it out later and now we're in this new contextualized element of society which for the record for the most part i'm on board with but you do have this there, there's this thing lingering in the air of like no hazing of being kind to each other of respecting mental health and all this stuff and that is kind of at odds with the formula that jackass got popular on 
right? Mm -hmm. So now you have Steve-O who is, is sober. So he can't hide his, his instinctive emotions through alcohol or other substances. And now he's face to face with the fact that he is a people pleaser. He tries to do the things he normally does. Some people call him out for it, call it bullying, call it whatever it is. And, and he's at odds because there's the identity of him that made him famous, which is the jokester and the prankster and, and the kind of shithead. And then you have the version of himself who's maybe reconciling with a new society in a new world, and he's maybe trying to move on a little bit. And those two things are at odds, and I get it. And maybe the apology is is forced or, or whatever it is, but that process is it's never going to be clean. So, you know, I think we just have to give him a little bit of rope to let him figure it out because he's it's a weird balancing act, I'd imagine, that he's got to accomplish in order to achieve what he wants to achieve with the history of him being who he was. Yeah. You actually touched on a lot of very, like the reasons why I feel that way. Like, like you said, it was like, do this, do that. Don't give a fuck attitude. The people that you start to appease by apologizing over stupid shit. So that's none of their business. It's because they're fucking dorks at home and they fucking are sad that they don't have any money. And this guy worked his fucking goddamn ass off. You like, Work your ass off. If you put as much into anything as Steve-O put into this shit, you would be rich or at least happy. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I actually fully, I, I think a lot of people look at something it's like jackass in general. It's like, oh, it's just kids fucking around. Like no they way. don't deserve what they like. I, I've, I've come around to the idea that 90% of the time, if someone is rich and famous off of things that they're doing online, they're working way harder than you realize. Yeah. And there's a lot that goes into it. The one the one caveat, actually, before we move too far away from it, that I do want to say about Steve-O's advertising, there's another element of it that I've heard people complain about, which isn't that he is advertising. It's the places in which he places the ads and the context of the ads to what he's saying. And I remember in Bam Margera's episode, it was it was particularly bad. I remember this sticking out, and and this I actually do kind of oh. agree with. It's like Bam's talking about his his addictions, and he gets really deep. And Steve O's like, "Wow, dude, that's like really, you know, he's really struggling with that addiction." But you know what? I'm not struggling with tushy dot like something yeah, like, or like it was something like health. that. Com, yes, you know, yeah. Like, and I was like, "Oof, that that seems in poor taste." So that I actually, if that's what the complaint is, I get it. Um, but if it's just that he is constantly, you know, like in Jackass, the movie, when he's doing the quiet game, he has a Steve-O branded deck that's, that's, yeah. uh, falling onto his, and people are like, oh, stop hucking your boards. It's, it's the movie. It's like, no, I get it. But, I'm but fine. He, his, his, it. his thought process, which he does talk about is that he, he, um, he, he doesn't just want to just try and sell you on stuff. He wants to tie it into content. So it's at least a right. fun delivery method, which is right, right, right. way above and beyond what anybody else is doing. Everybody else is like, hey, check out this merch drop, da -da -da, yeah. limited edition, buy now, or otherwise you're going to miss out. He's like, yeah. makes a whole entire video around a prank or around, you know, like he did, he was trying to hug his new hot sauce. He went to Steve Will Do It's house, did a hot, a butt chug sure. with the super hot sauce. You know what I mean? Gets these guys involved. Fuck it, man. Like that's creative. Yep. It's fun. People got to make money, man. These guys are like beating themselves up. They're not going to be able to just like live a normal life when they get older. You know what I mean? So it's like they got to make money while they can. Right. Make hay while the sun up, shines. You got you brought up a great point as well, which is like it is it is crazy when you hear behind the scenes how much money they aren't making. Mm -hmm. Like with the exception of and, you know, no shade at, at Knoxville and Tremaine because they're they're making what they're owed. But it seems like anyone who isn't the main people and even some of the main people are not making what they deserve to make for having essentially thrown their bodies away. Like, I'd be curious to see what Danger Aaron made off of Jackass Forever. I guarantee well, did, you it's did, not did, enough. You know, Steve almost wasn't in Jackass Forever. I do, yeah, because of some contract negotiations. He just, he just wanted a better contract and they're yeah. like, oh, you don't want a piece. And he's like, oh, yeah. shit. Which, yeah. you know, it's like I love Knoxville and Tremaine, but like, they're fucking caking, man. And I know they put it, yeah. it all together, but like it wouldn't be anything without these people. Like fucking share a bit more of the like I and I'm I don't know the numbers back scene, yeah. so maybe it's naive to say, but like it just the the profit sharing does not seem it fair seem, for something that yes. relies so much on the the cast who actually helped build this up in the first place. Maybe the newer people, whatever, give them less and let them use that as an opportunity to shine and create their career. But for the OGs, like, come on, man. I actually don't like the idea of someone being cast in a major motion picture having that being having the reward for that being a jumping off point for the rest of their career that all that should be the career you know don't have poopies in jackass forever and say to him you're going to make less because now your career is going to be monumental 
because you were in jackass. No, 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 no. Pay him because he's in ja- That should be the payoff. The you, money you, you get from jackass. You that, say, that's you the say peak. That, that's though, the peak. But not, no, like, put it this way. You're, you're an up and coming actor. You're not really in any big major roles. Are you getting right. the same money as fucking Tom Cruise? Not a fucking no. chance. You're getting no. pretty shit money. And if you do well in that role, your next role pays off even more. That's kind of yeah. the way it works. But the jackass, the OGs, they've done well in every fucking role they've ever done. And they still seem to be, from all accounts that I hear, and like I said, I don't know exactly what's going on, getting a not what seems like the fairest deal. For sure. But there's not an actor on the planet who's going to be in a movie next to Tom Cruise and make $50,000. They're They're making way more than that. And I think from what I've heard, and this could be totally wrong, but from what I've heard, I think Poopy's contract for Jackass Forever was like 50 grand. Isn't that what they signed like from that? And maybe they made something after that, but like, and again, if I'm wrong, I apologize, but I thought that I'd heard that. I in heard some something video. similar to that too. And but. if that's the case, that is so fucked up because yes, Chris, the next, vi- the next movie you're in, if you're in a Tom Cruise movie, you're going to make a lot more money, but there are, th- that is, that could be any movie out there. There is a very limited number of things that pay decent money for people who are in the business of jackass related content. There isn't another jackass. There aren't a thousand jackass movies coming out, but there are a thousand movies coming out in which you can star after you're in a Tom Cruise movie. You have to look after the people who are putting their lives on the line literally for this. But, you know, I think I think kind of enough about that. We got to We got to move on to uh, to Wild Boys because we're on season two, episode three. We spent a decent chunk of time talking about uh, Steve-O, which, uh, you know. Those kinds of conversations I can I can talk all day. Um, yeah, I feel like go go listen to that episode and maybe yeah. even listen to part of the Zach one before. It's not as necessary, but it'll but give a bit of perspective. And then I say we come on at some point and just throw in like a bonus, like what's going on, like sure, or like kind of go into d- delve into it a little bit more. Yeah, let's um, do it. Yeah, or yeah. And if you're if you're out there listening and you have some thoughts on this, reach out to us either Jackass Pod on all the social media or on uh, jackasspod at gmail dot com, and we'll read some of your uh, your thoughts uh, on on the episode uh, that that we end up coming back to this. Speaking of thoughts, before we get into Wild Boys season two episode three, I wanted to give a bit of a shout out to Pete Steros three six three, who's just been so active on our YouTube channel, comments on just about every video, likes nice. every video, always has something to add uh, in regards to you know some of the cut content or the special features features recommendations for new episodes that we listen to and just recently he said i really love your guys podcast and look forward to each episode every week it's the best with a bunch of exclamation marks so thanks for for joining and being an active member of the community there pete and uh hey if you want to if you want to do so as well you can join us on youtube or like i said all the socials and we'd love to give some of you guys a shout out the best way the best way you can show your support is an itunes review by the way lets us read it online we'll give you guys a shout out try to make us laugh in it uh and if you do bonus points but that's that's always the best way to uh to, to lend a hand enough of that uh let's let's move on <laughs> I, I i have a question for you chris at the end of our last uh wild boys episode because mm-hmm. i know we took a break to do to do uh dudesons do you remember when you guys asked where we think we're going next and i said do you remember what i said uh, i don't remember but i remember this happening i said africa yeah and here we are the land of the largest animals in the world the largest land animals in the in the world it's kenya we're going to kenya for this week's episode of wild boys and the introduction we got Wee man sitting in between he's flanked by the wild boys themselves pontius and steve-o dressed up like uh jane's dad from tarzan with those weird ass safari hats like what i don't know what is the purpose of those safari hats do they do anything and do you have to wear a monocle when you're wearing one i don't know <laughs> Yes, they do a lot. And two, no, you don't have to wear a monocle. Oh. Do you remember, Mikey, when we went to Africa and we went on a safari, how I dressed up in a fucking safari outfit virtually almost every single day? Yes, you were and so excited. I was the most excited. I am notoriously, like, to put, to put in perspective, we we're supposed to record like 45 minutes before we started, and I just slept in. I do not like waking up in the morning. <laughs> That's today. That's today. That was today. I hate waking up in the morning on that trip. And by morning, you mean 11 a.m.? That yeah. we were I just don't, for I, I don't like to like hey i can wake up at 11 and feel like it's fine but i just don't like to be forced to wake up on this trip i would wake up at like 4 45 in the morning i i would get it all dressed ready to go crank the lion king every single morning <laughs> oh, <laughs> and go to like my girl at the time and and uh wake her up every morning to the point she was like can you just be your normal fucking self and sleep in for one <laughs> she was so tired. fucking yeah, pissed yeah. off because i'd be like hey wake up wake up wake up wake up let's go <laughs> um but yes so the safari elephants do do a lot you know they they help you 
feel like a safari person. Yeah, I think that's that's mainly what it is. I think it's just feeling like you're you're there, uh, or you're about to play Jumanji or something like that. Uh, we're introduced to Oye, the Hippo Warden, which, uh, for my money, has to be the best title of a profession you could possibly have. Hippo Warden, unbelievable. Um, but we're, we're introduced to this idea that hippos, you know, every everyone knows this. First of all, if you've ever said to someone else this fact as though no one's ever heard it that hippos are actually the most dangerous animals in africa stop it everyone knows that already you're not being special that's yeah that was so 1990s it is yeah everyone's like oh lions or whatever it's like no no, no. we all are very well aware that there it's was like a big now. publisher service announcement like mid 90s where it just that that was just that information was shared it was like yeah. that back then it was like wow really yes we've had like, like 25 fucking years since then same thing how like the mgm uh logo it's not a lion roaring it's like a sea lion or something like that you know oh, i never like knew the, that one. Oh, you didn't it's not a no. lion yeah okay oh, well wow. certain There's facts no like that people are no no seriously yeah it's not a lion that's bizarre um, also yeah. kenya really positive country C- yes you can can't you they could have named themselves can't you can't you and, they said yeah, kenya, and i like that so that's very shout good out, shout very out the positive yeah. attitude um do you think hippos know how dangerous they are no. Do you think they know that we're now afraid of them? No. Because this this whole thing, this whole stunt, basically the premise is they got a Steve-O blow-up doll and they're going to stress, Wee Man's going to strap it to a uh, uh, a little remote control boat and they're going to drive it around the hippos and they just leave it alone. They don't, they don't fuck with this thing at all. The hippos are like afraid of it. Um, part of me wonders... Are hippos actually this dangerous? Like, is is this is this a thing? Have we ever seen it? We've just heard it. Is Africa playing a prank on the rest of the world by taking wow. these lovable sea cows and being like, what if we just convinced everyone they're the most dangerous ones? <sighs> That's that would be an uh, ultimate finesse. That like, would be a great. We finesse. actually, and meanwhile, when there's no like tourists around, they're like swimming with them. They're actually so yeah. friendly. They're like, That's it. They're playing actual hungry, hungry hippo by pulling their tails. <laughs> like, <ooh, ooh. laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, get around. Another game of Hungry Hungry Info. Yeah, but I, the, I think they may be. The only reason why I wouldn't think that is because if there's one person in the world that I trust, it's it was Steve Irwin. And oh, when you yeah, see yeah, him yeah, yeah. kayaking around those hippos and when he was in Africa, he looked scared. Maybe as scared as I've ever seen him look. He looked nervous and nervous, so I kind of buy it after seeing that. Well, I mean, it wasn't the hippos that got him, though, Chris, so. Don't you ever. I'm not making fun of him. I'm just saying they weren't the thing to worry about when you're talking about his death. That's my, yeah, because I'm fondly remembering all of the great times. Just, I don't, I made fun of Steve Irwin. (laughs) You're getting a knuckle sandwich, buddy. (laughs) And I'm putting on my fucking safari gear to do it. Yeah. Okay. You're going to, going to come hunting me. Um, the, uh, uh, the funniest thing about this one was Wee man doing the Steve-O impression through the two way (sighs) radio that they attached to the boat, pretending to be Steve-O and like egging on the, uh, the, the hippos a little disappointing all in all, though, I wanted the hippos to like demolish the thing. Do you think there was a version of this stunt though, where Steve-O was actually on like a jet ski or something, probably not jet ski because it'd be tough to bring that out to Africa, but like that Steve-O is actually in the water and ultimately they're like, no, you can't do that or were they always so aware that that was impossible they didn't even think i don't even think they would even thought of it okay that's fair um so we'll move then we'll run on that on into the uh the next stunt it's the uh it's it's the the running with the animals but a notable omission we get pontius running towards a, a bunch of uh giraffes the reticulated giraffes with uh with with his butt wagging in the air but no steve-o where was steve-o in this one Sleepo was out, I bet. Sleepo was probably out. Um, you know, as we said on the last episode, though, we do want to start to give these uh, the, these naked runs away from the camera uh, a rating. So, Chris, do you do you have a rating you want to give this one? Uh, uh, if you don't got, if you don't got both the Wild Boys, it's low rating for me. I got to still give Pontius his props. Like, put it this way: if Steve-O is in, it might be an eight out of ten. Yeah. So I'm going to go with four out of ten. I think that's fair. I think I think I'm going to go a four as well. I think you're missing half of it. That's a lot. I, you know what? No, I'm going to go for a five because the the thing I liked about this one is how unplanned it seemed. The camera just kind of like comes out of nowhere. True. Pawnee is just kind of looking over his shoulder and just starts sprinting towards it and everyone's laughing. So it was funny, but you do need Steve-O to make it as good. So I'm going to go with a five out of ten. Chris, you're going with a four out of ten. And we are going to go travel to the Samburu tribe uh, to go give uh, Steve-O a little haircut and, uh, and a makeover to everyone else involved. Uh, what do you know about the Saburu tribe, Chris? Have you? I feel like I've seen these these uh, these people before. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because they're one of the people that I recognized 
pre watching the show. Yes. Like 100%. you've seen them in different in like little different uh documentaries and National Geographic magazines and things along those lines. Um but I, I don't know much about them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would. I'd be lying. No, I'm the same way. I, I've seen visually. I have seen them. Very striking features in the sense that they all have uh, braided red hair, which is really cool. They kind of dye everything red, so it, it's it's kind of a striking image. And I, I I think that in these segments with the Simburu tribe, I don't think Chris Pontius has ever looked better than he does with them once he gets the makeover and even steve-o so they they end up giving him like a traditional haircut or or somewhat traditional as as would relate to to uh, uh the tribes people here he gets uh his head shaved with a really small razor it's a uh, dull razor it's a dull razor and here's the thing it's like a little blade like a razor blade but i don't know how much i hope this doesn't come across as offensive because it shouldn't they're using a razor which is that's that's like a modern tool a razor. They didn't find that in the wilderness. It's not something that it's not like a a sharpened stone or something like that. So they're using modern technology. Can we just get them clippers or shears? Why why are they making it hard on themselves? You're already using technology. Use get a bic razor. Just get a send send a case full of bic razors out to them. Like I was going to say, like clippers might not work because they don't have electricity out there. But like yeah, yeah. the uh, the bic yeah seriously because I, I feel like what what are they holding out for? <laughs> It makes a lot of points. It's like they're, they're. It's not like they're like have some like they're not like Amish where they have some like religious obligation to stay away from technology because That's they're it. using it in the first place. They're using the technology already. Use better technology. Yeah, why you know why are they making this difficult on themselves? Fucking Gillette. Fucking Gillette. Hit us. Hit us up. We'll fucking put you in touch. We got a. We got a homie OG from the tribe. <laughs> Man, can fly him out some shit. Manscaped, Manscaped yeah. sponsors everybody. Yes. Manscaped exactly. even sponsored this podcast. Manscaped sends some stuff out to them. Harry's Razors. <laughs> Harry's Razors is, is advertising yeah. on every podcast. Yeah. The man. Dude, I don't know. Something happened. And it, it just remind me of this. This is hilarious. I had this like epiphany moment last night where I felt like I'd just been duped. I'd just been manipulated. Remember back in like, so for all you youngins out there, before boxers came out, like there was uh-huh. no such thing. Boxers came out like early 90s. Yeah. Like it was all Speaking the just straight, like tidy whitey undies, just like the straight, like high leg, like, like girl underwear, basically. Yeah. And this huge movement happened in the in like the 90s where it's like, dude, you got to wear boxers if you wear that other shit. Like, it's so lame. Like, da, da, da. it's like those things just like are so tight on your balls. Like, you need the freedom of the boxers, yada, yada, yada. And, you, and as a kid, you're like, yeah, man, I don't want my nuts all tied up. And yeah, like this yeah. huge marketing campaign where it's like basically those underwears went from like the only thing to like eliminated for anybody <laughs> yeah. under a certain age. So I'm sitting there last night and I love like Saks underwear. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, it's nice to have my nuts all tight. Like, uh, like I love the ballpark pouch, which is now yes. what we're being sold these days. So in essence, the thing so that I fun. love is the exact is the exact same thing that made me get rid of it. I'm still have the boxers on, but now I got the tight thing. So it was like an ultimate finesse. And I'm I like, totally agree. I so like the, I like the compact feeling of having everything just just where it's supposed to be. Yeah. So why did we ever go boxers in the first place? I don't know. I don't know what it was. I think as a kid, anything that has to do like we're so impressionable, especially when it comes to do with our balls and our and our dick, that if someone says that something is uncool and it's related to it, we're just going to believe them if enough people say Mountain Dew. That's that's all it was. The rumor that Mountain Dew killed your sperm count. It was the biggest drink back when we're kids. They finally only now made a resurgence. Yeah, yeah, because no one wants to have kids anymore, so we drink it to uh, sterilize <laughs> ourselves. Um, so they give Steve-O this traditional haircut, uh, and they're kind of laughing at his haircut. Um, um, I think that haircut has actually come back in it's style It's like a boxer's a bit. haircut. Yes, exactly, exactly. He uh, and, and it honestly looks kind of cool. They dye his hair red. He's got, it's kind of like his hairline is taken back, like a couple. Like, he's got, like, the uh, the Sadio Mane haircut a little bit from Liverpool. But I don't know if that's uh, a haircut, Mikey. <laughs> and he's from Bayern now, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Oh, he's in Byron. We, yeah, we yeah, miss yeah. him. But yeah, I don't think that was a haircut, man. He had the fucking maybe the furthest back push hairline I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. So that's kind of what Steve is looking like. But I think he looks cool. And uh, and we take that haircut over to an underground beehive. Oh, my God. What? Mane's from Africa. 
Do you think he got his hair cut from the From then. <laughs> yeah. I bet you he did. I bet you he did. That's where it came from. Although he dyed it blonde instead of red. And I think he should have, I think he should have gone red. Yeah. Um, um, the, uh, they, they go over then to the, to an underground beehive. We find out that the Samburu tribe is actually, uh, uh, they, they do a lot with bees. Their, their relationship to bees is pretty, uh, uh, significant. They, they collect honey from them. They make booze from it. The process is to smoke out the beehive, reach your hand in there and just grab out some honeycombs. Uh, uh, and Steve-O does it. He's the first one to do it, reaches in, grabs the honey. It's impossible not to get stung a little bit, which he does. Wee Man does the same thing. And it, at first, when Wee Man starts to get stung, I his reaction made me think like, oh, this guy's he's kind of a pansy. Like, it's, it's a bee sting. It's not the end of the world. But he's so game to get stung over and over again that if it is the case like you know some people are more sensitive to bee stings and maybe he is if it does hurt him as much as he's showing good on him for continuing to go back again and again eventually he lets the bee sting him right on the fucking nose and that vision that image of him with a stinger out of his nose is so iconic to me in wild boys yeah well especially um, think about from his perspective and be like helicopters fucking flying by coming at you <laughs> He's treating it like it's fucking King Kong. He yeah. has a, like fear like Vietnam flashbacks. You know that like whole fucking meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are a lot bigger. They're like flying bears to him, right? Um, um, you know what? One of the issues that I have with with these segments, though, when they go to visit these tribes and do the things that the tribes do, by default, they should always show a member of the tribe doing the thing that they're doing so we have a baseline for how well they do it you know what i mean i want to see them reaching in and grabbing some of the honey to see how much they pull out i want to see them if you they think get those stung. guys are actually stupid enough to do this shit they're just pulling one big prank on the wild boys hey buddy, we stick our hands in this bullet arm thing this bullet hand thing to make sure that we're, we're men you guys got to do it they're sitting back just laughing their ass off like look at these dumb white guys that's honestly, and I didn't think about it like that, but that would be a great idea. Yeah, it's like the, the whole hippopotamus that, thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe Africa just has like the maybe greatest. Af- Africa's are just some serious pranksters. They're just some that, serious rascals over there. It seems like that might be the case because they even take bees in this one and they like grab the bees and sting people with it. That and, was, that and, was the funniest thing. I've, I don't know. I love that so much. It, the, I could have watched half an hour of them doing this. It was so fucking funny to me when someone in the tribe grabs a bee and st- stings Pontius with it. Pontius looks furious and chases <laughs> this guy off as though that guy's been a crew member of Jackass yeah. forever. That's what I love the most about it. He's not being cordial. He's like, okay, you're going to play that game. I'm going to fucking wrestle you. Like, it's, it was great. I love that. I love that about it. Pontius, like, you already knew this, Chris, I think, because you're such a big fan of Wild Boys, but. I, I don't remember Pontius being so good at it. Do you know what I mean? He, he's, he's good at handling, he's good at, uh, handling animals. He's always the person who seems to be like the ambassador between the jackass crew and the tribes that they're visiting. He speaks to them as though they're just, they're, as they are other human beings as opposed to like a sideshow, you know? And, and, and when you're, when you're taking a crew into these tribes, and you're you're kind of making fun of some of the things they do or not making fun of it, but like like doing stunts to get people to laugh based on the culture of these tribes. You're really treading a fine line. And if you're if you come across as not treating them as human, it's a really bad look. But you see the way Pontius interacts with them. And it's like just like they've been friends forever. And mm-hmm. I think it just lends such an element of legitimacy and authenticity to these to these interactions that it it changes the whole vibe. I love it. You You could put it this way. You could. Do the show with Steve-O and any other cast member, including Knoxville. It wouldn't, it would not be anywhere near as good. I, I totally I bet agree. you you could do the show with Pontius and any other cast member. And it, and would, it would still be, be as good. Yes, or, I agree. Not as good. It's like Steve-O and Pontius, they just have that amazing camaraderie, but it just goes to show how much Pontius, it, like how important he is to the show, exactly like you said, for yeah. all those reasons. Yeah, Steve-O is so opposite end of the spectrum from Pontius. And, and it's, it's the definition of like opposites attract. Like this just mm-hmm. really works. They are the chocolate and peanut butter of the nature documentary community. Uh, Mark Rackley gets stung and he gets a title card. We talked about Mark Rackley, the cameraman in the last episode who was all over the fucking place in, 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 in the, the episode in India. And, or was it? No, not India. Uh, where were the Amazon? And he never got a title card. So he gets one here and, and that made me feel pretty good. Enough of the bees though. Um, 
now we move on to uh, uh, from from air to land. And then it, we did sea with the hippos. We did air with the bees. And now we're land. We're doing the Navy SEALs thing here. We've got the army ant to okay. the nipple, which is apparently a game <laughs> that the tribes people play. OK, to see if they can I'm just going to get onto these fuckers. You know what, eh? Chris, you're 100 percent right. You're 100 percent right. They're walking around. They're like, what are some things that we can do? And Steve even clarifies because he goes, he's like, so the, the 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 idea is you get you get bit. And you don't make any noise, right? And the person's like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yes, that, of course, that's the name of the game. But you're so right. They're definitely fucking with the wild boys. I, uh, I love that. What did you think about these ants? They looked fucking gnarly. I did not like them at all. Like- I never, I've never imagined that an ant could clamp onto you and you wouldn't be able to pull it off. Right? That's the craziest thing. It's using its pincers and they can't just brush it off. Hey, Mikey, I, yeah. I got a really cool fact for you. Okay. Did you know ants could lift a hundred times their body weight? Chris, I know I what you're see, doing here. I, I know what you're I'm, doing I'm here. I'm pretty good today. You're pretty good. No, Chris, you're on. You're on fire today. I'm. I'm enjoying this. Um. Uh. Unlike I. I, I definitely would not enjoy a game no. where you put ants on your nipples. And here's the thing. I'm honestly more on side with you. I think they're fucking with the wild boys a little bit here. But if they're not, if this is in their tribe a game, never mind the Clippers get get these guys a ps5 like someone has to someone has to give them something that's more entertaining than ants on nipples because that that is not a fun game at all um these guys would love elden ring if they're if they're such uh such masochists uh i think they would like the over and over again uh dying of elden ring if you're a fan of that game um do you think you could do this chris because no no you don't like like like, could i yeah would i know would you if 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 five hundred dollars were on the line, could oh, you take one? Could you take one on the nipple? Five thousand dollars. I'm a brokey. <laughs> I'm a top G over here. Okay, fine. <laughs> if five thousand dollars were on the line, could you take a bite on the nipple and not make a sound? Oh, and not make a sound? No yes. fucking way. I I don't think I could, man. Yeah. Like I, I I don't like I don't like my nipples played with at all. I, I'm the same way. It I, bothers I'm the same me. Way. Like, if some chick's like, ooh, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? That's so weird. I'm not a fucking girl. <laughs> I'm not a fucking <laughs> That's a very far cry from taking an ant bite to the nipple, though. That's, I know. That's a I just put it, it just, it resonates. It's just like that feeling. Like, if you said, take it to your, like, kneecap or, like, yeah. my fucking power elbows that I knock people out with, I'd be like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> cool. No problem. Okay, another day deal. at the office. Another day at the office. Uh, another day in the octagon for Chris. <laughs> no, I agree. I, th- I honestly, though, I think I could. I think I could do this without making a sound. I honestly do. I think, I th- you I think I you're could. pretty, pretty tough. You're pretty tough. I'm, guy. I'm used to. I'm used to keeping my emotions inside at all costs, and not. <laughs> so I think that I can do this. Uh, but, but I also don't want to prove that. So don't come at me with any, any offers of, of, of proving it. Um, some guy, one, one guy who I know could definitely do this is Bonface, uh, warrior for the Semburu tribe. This guy looked like a badass, like the kind of, kind of like very effeminate features, but something tells me this guy could kick everyone's ass. Did you, did you get the same vibe from this guy, Bonface? I'm attracted to him. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I'm gonna fold on say it. like he's really fucking cool and he's like hot. Here's the thing: <laughs> if you if you just show his face with that cool ass red hair, that's the thing. Before they showed the rest of his body, I didn't know it was a guy, and I was like, if it wasn't, I was like, then maybe I will be attracted to this person. But the only thing that told me not to be was when the camera panned out and I saw that it was a guy. I don't know what that says about me, but I agree. <laughs> I was attracted to this 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 human's face until i found out that the what was attached to the face was was male I, like, I don't i don't know what that's a mystical man i don't know he's just, he's got swagger there's something about him man he's a cool ass dude he really does he's got that like bruce lee element of masculinity where it's not it's not big bulging muscles and and a deep voice it's like a very flowy laid back version of masculinity like i i am in in my other podcast the retrograde uh my co-host andrew bascom said people like that could kick your ass and then take a bubble bath and you'd like thank them for it and i'm like okay i I like that i like that uh this is this uh in in this segment we're drinking honey beer uh, which is which is like some kind of uh, booze made of the bees honey. They keep the bees floating in the in the mixture as they go. Biggest takeaway from this, Steve-O takes a big sip from the, the canister. He looks at the camera like a kid on Christmas and he's like, 
Oh yeah, dude, that's total booze, man. Yeah. Just the line, the line <laughs> that's of the one episode. Of my favorite lines ever. It's he. It's like he's crying. You can tell because you mention Chris so often when the Wild Boys go on these trips. There's no booze. You know, they find themselves in areas where there's there, there's a limited am- amount of booze. And Steve always like he's hugging Bond face. He's so happy to have some sort of alcohol. It was it was amazing. Yeah. Do you think Do you think Steve would watch this now in his sobriety and? feel embarrassed about how much he got out of that sip of alcohol do you, do you know no, what i mean I like you'd like, acknowledge no. it like he's pretty he's like I, I understand that community quite a bit and his attitude towards this stuff is as by the book and as efficient as you could possibly have it you know he's like move past everything he's not scared to be around people doing stuff he's not trying to tell people not to do stuff if they don't need to but sure. he has a very hard line. He like if people ask him like, "Oh, it's good you're recovered." He's like, "No, I'm never recovered. This is a yeah. constant fight." He's like, "I have." He he says he got to go to meetings like every fucking however often he does a couple times a week. Doesn't matter where he is. He knows he what he has to do to keep this thing going. So <clears throat> I also think he's done a lot more embarrassing stuff that actually is embarrassing True. to him. That that True. that's where that pit in the stomach type stuff goes. But no, I think he'd be. Yeah, maybe, I think he'd maybe. enjoy watching this shit. To be honest. Yeah, I wonder. I'd love to ask him that question. I really would because I haven't heard him answer it before, and I, I would love to hear him address it. Um, um, and another thing that I would love to see is more of this elephant mud wrestling that we get. We get the WWF introduction with Pontius and Stevo and Wee Man, and eventually they put on the uh, the Mexican wrestler garb and they just do some wrestling moves in an, in a mud pit, which they say is an elephant toilet. I don't know if it is or if it's just like muddy water. Um, regardless, it looks gross and I wouldn't want anything to do with it. I can't imagine you're coming out of there with, with at least one or two parasites, uh, uh, coming home with you. You don't um, like, you don't like the whole slimy, like, yes, but like controlled, like mud doesn't gross me out, but stagnant water. Yeah. Does. Stagnant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want anything. And, and you and I, Chris, you mentioned we've been to Africa before this water. Anytime it's, there's a stagnant pool of water fucking reeks. It smells so bad. So bad. Um, and you just see like, like hippos taking shits and things like that. And then the next guy's beside him drinking, you know, it's like, what the fuck? How do they not get sick from that? Well, they also, I remember when we were in Africa, you know, you'd see like a pretty large body of water and hippos would just hang out in it. And our guide said, if you swim in that water, like there's a good chance you'll, you'll get sick and possibly die because of how toxic it is because the hippos just shit in there all day long. So I have to imagine this is more of a mud pool, but regardless, they don on the Mexican wrestling uh, uh, masks and they and they start to throw some elbow drops from the top ropes. They're hucking each other around. You have the elephants in the background watching them doing this to the baby elephants. Like, there's something about an elephant that feels so human to me. Like, they understand what we're doing and the elephants are kind of like jostling each other around like they're watching live wrestling. I oh, half expected one of them to like give them uh, to, to give them like a chair to like, you know, like for the audience <laughs> <laughs> Did you see any signs being held up in the audience? Yeah, yeah just the Generation sign. X signs and shit. <laughs> Elephant with its trunk suck is it. doing the suck it. Yeah, um, or just instead of a suck it, do like a take it. <laughs> oh, that like it, like its trunk is its dick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. More dick conversations to happen in uh, in in our next segment. Uh, but before we get there, if if you have this episode at your disposal and you can watch it, we man. <laughs> We then, when he puts on a Mexican wrestling mask, has the the textbook physique of a Mexican wrestler, like <laughs> the short, stocky, like he looks like he would be a terrifying Mexican wrestler out of context, like not standing next to anyone. He's basically Rey Mysterio Jr. Like I would not be able to tell the two of them apart. It was oh it, he, God, he, so it was amazing. Uh, so I mentioned that we're going to be uh, talking about dicks more in this episode. Uh, this one is no different. I didn't expect to see a black rhinoceros dick in this episode. Uh, that is <laughs> think it's bigger than the white rhino's dick. <laughs> I think it has to be. I think it has to be. I think it has to be. Um. Uh. Uh. Wow. All right. You, you, you got me <laughs> off my game. That was good. I, I, how, how did you not even think about that? I'm surprised. 
No, you know what? I When I said Black Rhino Dick, I was like, oh, that sounded pretty bad, but I didn't think of a way to make it funny like you just did, so so kudos for you. Uh, and uh, I'm sure James Koskoy, the Koske, the Rhino, the Rhino Expert, which is another job title I would love to have uh, as, he, as he leads the Wild Boys uh, to track a Black Rhino. Now, the premise of this one is great because apparently Black Rhinoceros... They they're they're more in danger than the white rhinoceros. They're more uh, aggressive than the white rhinoceros. And the reason why they dislike humans is because they now associate humans with things like poaching and captivity. So Stevo says, well, if we can get up to it and massage it, maybe it'll recognize that humans aren't so bad. So this is basically like a peace treaty between the humans and the rhinoceros. When a wild boy sketch has a premise like this, you know, even even in the Amazon episode. Uh, with the, the endangered manatees and they, they become like the, the, to- the salad toss. It, le- even though it wasn't a good sketch, at least it had a premise. I love when they go for it and have a premise in this one. Uh, but ultimately I can't believe that they actually did this one. Like, uh, that's, yeah. There's a few things that, wild? There, there's a handful of things in Wild Boys that I'm just like, I can't believe you fucking did that. And this is yeah. definitely one of them. They're standing right next to the rhino. Uh, and maybe it's the fact that like, I bet you there's a sweet spot where if you're 10 feet away from a rhino, that's the most dangerous place to be. But if you're right next to it, it's it's less dangerous. They're not going to be able to spin around as quickly as you. Maybe they'll run away instead of who? who I don't know. They don't seem as agile as a bull, but they do seem like once they get a good head of steam, you're absolutely fucked. Um, uh, so they get right up to it. Steve O's losing his cool. Like Steve O, and it's funny because everyone on set is like, Steve O, you gotta calm yourself down. Like this, you're gonna, you're, if you run away, it'll chase you. Stop running away. Stop screaming. Don't make noise. And, and I'm thinking that as, as the viewer, I'm like, Steve O, like, chill the fuck out. You're gonna anger this thing. But he turns to the camera and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid of a giant rhinoceros. So <laughs> like, And I'm like, you know what? Good point. That's, exactly. that's fair on you. I don't know how I'd react if I were side by side with a with a, a rhinoceros. But you know who seems the most comfortable there is Wee Man. Wee Man will do anything with this rhino. He's the first one to go up and grab its horn. He's he's the one who wants to like reach back and grab its dick. He's like petting it. Um, uh, I don't know. Steve-O was really impressive in this. Or, I mean, uh, Wee Man was really impressive in this one. Yeah, I can't think of why. Like, it just, That's... I was trying to make, like, a joke. Like, maybe he thinks he can duck under him easier. Like, but it just balls. I don't know. Maybe, like, sometimes you just get a vibe with animals. Like, yeah, you know, sometimes, like, some people see, like, a big dog or something, and they're, like, they get scared, and the dog's energy reacts a certain way. And then sometimes yes. you're, like, yeah. no, I'm at one with this animal right now. It's cool. And maybe that seemed like he had that. It really did. And I think that his comfort with it kind of uh, uh, seeped through uh, via osmosis to to Steve-O because Steve-O got a lot more comfortable. Steve-O is now getting back there and and uh, and he's he's basically like, okay, in order to really show this rhino what we think of it. We have to touch its dick. And uh, and he and he does. And and the rhino kind of like, you know, jostles around a bit. Good old James Koskoy, I think, just realized he's like, these guys are either going to live or die, and he has no control over it. So he just lets them have his way with the rhino at a certain point. Um, and as Steve-O is touching the rhino's dick, he gets farted on, and and oh it, it seems like it gets into his mouth and seeps through his pores. Uh, that was probably the hardest that I laughed in the whole episode. It was so, there's, there's nothing better than a good fart, and a good well-timed fart. 100%. 100%. Um, um, or a good joke about Wee Man's height, which we get in the next one as they're passing through to the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, some, someone standing by the sign indicating that they're going to be passing through to the Southern Hemisphere says to, to, uh, to Wee Man, you have to be this tall to pass through. And he's standing next to the sign and he just barely makes it and she's loving it and he's loving it. It was a great interstitial, uh, just the perfect amount of time and, and the perfect amount of whimsy to it. And on the other side of the hemisphere, on the Southern Hemisphere, we are introduced to dung beetles. Uh, this was a segment that I thought could have gone either way. The premise was unbelievable, but the actual beat by beat was a little bit slow. I think Steve and Pontius save it. The premise is we're going to find some dung beetles. They're going to roll up some poo and they're going to bring a foosball table out into the middle of the wilderness and get the dung beetles to see wh- which which goal they they push them into. Um, did this did this one speak to you fucking as much brilliant. as it did to me? Absolutely it was so brilliant. fucking brilliant. I loved it. It's like just the juxtaposition of that table out there. Like who thought of that? Like it's a great really, question. who thought of that? Because and that's did just they, such did a- they bring the table with them to Africa, or did they just find the table there somewhere and bring it out to the wilderness? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the idea out in Africa. 
I'm, I'm sure they do. It's a, more of a football country. I would assume that that yeah, would be. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, um, Oh, country, uh, continent. Um, the uh, uh, but the 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 juxtaposition of a foosball table being out there in the African wilderness is is like just as a shot is is worth the price of admission for this one. They named the Beatles Maradona and Pele. Pele, rest in peace. Just passed away a couple Maradona, days ago. Rest in peace as well. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, we we lost both They're of them. Playing a game yesterday. There was it yesterday or the day before. I think it was two days ago. They're up there in in heaven in the clouds playing a nice game of soccer. You think Maradona made it to heaven? Hundred percent. Yeah. Just because he did a shit ton of cocaine doesn't mean he was a good <laughs> that's person. True, that's true. That's by, true. That, by that justice, sorry, man, you won't ever see me up there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I think I'm going to go to hell. And I don't know what I did to deserve it, but I think there's some loophole where it's like you didn't live for yourself enough or something, and therefore the <laughs> devil gets to like shoot you in the ass twice a day. Um, that's the, heaven. That's heaven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good point. Good point. Um. I have a, a just a, a, a baseline question about dung beetles for this one, because they talk about how territorial dung beetles are. And you see it when Maradona and Pele are fighting over this perfectly spherical piece of dung. And I don't know if I need to speak to the spokesperson of, of dung beetles or something where I'm going to get my answer on this. But why are why are they fighting? over there's so much shit in the african wilderness go find another pile like i don't know why we're in and, and, and you know what if you don't see any wait five minutes another animal <laughs> it's not a finite resource stop fighting with one another go find another pile of dung like do the work yourself don't just steal a pile of dung because you see it i i i i the whole wilderness smells like dung out there go That's go so hang true. out next to one of those one of those hippo things and you'll find plenty of it You'll never have to fight another dung beetle again. So that that's a weird question. That I don't know why they're so territorial. Fucking brilliant, Mikey. Thank you. Uh, as brilliant as an animal that makes its living rolling up piles of shit. Um, the best part about this one is, you know, the premise is great, but you can't train a dung beetle to play foosball. So they're kind of just like running around the the playing board. Um, what makes this is Chris Pontius and Steve-O they're so sweetly watching the Beatles go at it. Like Pontius is sitting there like head in his hands, like, Oh, Maradona. I hope you did. Like it just, it mm-hmm. became, I, I don't know if it's because they got bored or if they, uh, if they just uh, legitimately were enamored by these Beatles. But that to me was almost heartwarming in a weird way. Yeah. No, hundred percent. It was just very cute. I just loved it. It was just a very, like one of those gentle. Sorry. Hank's acting like a weird guy. Oh, that my my sister's dog is yeah. uh, is is causing some problems on the he's other like side. He's like trying of the, to walk again. by the wires that are all plugged in, and I'm like, think he's going to knock everything down. Well, uh, if Chris if Chris goes, uh, uh, no, he's back on the. If I was going to say, if Chris disappeared for a second there, we'd know what happens. Oh, um, you about to hear some water chugging? <laughs> no, it was it was sweet. I was it was really sweet. I like this one. The the uh, uh, the, the weirdest thing about this, Chris. That is the that is the loudest dog. I know you told me not to mute my mic. No, no, don't mute it. No, this is. I'm just like I don't know what to do. I'm just sitting here, just so thrown off. It sounds like we're walking by uh, uh, a watering hole, and and all the animals are drinking. Are you hungry, hungry hippo? Are Are you you hungry, hungry hippo? hippo? He, he's got he got he's got some hippo energy into him. If you want to see what Hank looks like, you can see him in the background of Chris's camera over on our YouTube channel. Um, question for you though, Chris, because eventually yeah. we get the the uh, the dung beetles. I can't even remember who wins. I did. I think it was Pontius who wins. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that's not what it's about. The the ball of dung. Am I crazy? Or did it look oddly delicious? It, it, was there an? It was so. It it's so perfectly so perfect. spherical. It's so perfectly spherical. It looks like an energy ball. Like you ever have those breakfast energy balls? I don't. Does it look like I do? <laughs> <laughs> if, talk, if you said chocolate ice cream, you might have an answer for you. Sure, sure. No, it looks it looks oddly delicious. Uh, Steve-O throws the poo at Pontius uh, and uses his whole damn body to throw the poo. I would have thought Steve-O had a better arm than this. He is is a terribly uncoordinated thrower, uh, but that's I guess something we'll address at a different time. We go now to the uh, to the the Nile crocodile where the Wild Boys crew are cleaning out a pool of water where the Nile crocodiles uh, hang out, so that the Wild Boys uh, 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 crew, Steve-O, Pontius, and Wee Man can skateboard in it would it like this is another one where i'm like how the fuck did they let this happen this feels crazy to me right the the because crocodiles are the dangerous one right the, not nile crocodiles the most vicious <laughs> craziest animal in the game 
Like honestly, I don't know, they're like pretty crazy background there. I think that's the animal that I would be the most scared of out of anything other than other than like even like a gardener snake. But like they could, the, if you go near the water, they don't have bubbles. You have no idea that they're there. They could leap out of the water their 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 uh, length, their body length, in less than like a, in like a fraction of a second. You're gone, and they take you down that's and so they do scary. a death spin, and they drown you, and they just tear you apart. These fucking animals are so gnarly and they're so territorial. You know they could grow their their limbs back. Wait, we, they get like their, like, like their legs with another too? guy. They get their leg bitten. That's bonkers. That feels that feels fake. That feels like superhero shit. It seems like God gave them too many things, too many advantages. Like you got to mm-hmm. It's like the octopus. Like how octopus just has all like camouflage they can shape shift they're smarter than us they're probably from another planet they taste delicious like they maybe that you know that's, what that's the one that's, that's the, the thing the downfall. that's the thing yeah. is, is all that shit and we don't want to leave them alone because we want them on a bed of rice with a little bit of seaweed um this one this one was a lot of fun though uh i don't i don't want to try alligator sushi uh, or crocodile sushi but it was gnarly as shit you get wee man like ollieing over uh, some of the crocodiles in the bowl going right next to them. I'm honestly a little bit surprised that the wildlife center that that had this pool let them do this because of the danger not only to the skateboarders but to the crocodiles. Like when Wee Man first tries to ollie over a crocodile, he falls, and it's like, what if he landed on the crocodile? Like, yes, that would hurt him, but I got to imagine that hurts the crocodile too. I don't think crocodiles get hurt, man. They're just. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> They're literally like plated with armor. They're used to like biting each other in the face. You ever see like some of those videos? Like, I don't think a wee man of all people falling is going to hurt. It. Okay. Yeah. Like, may- may- maybe not. Does a fucking man. fly hit me or what the fuck? <laughs> um, I don't usually say the word gnarly much, but this was gnarly. This was gnarly mm-hmm. as shit. I loved this. This was, again, I keep saying peak wild boys, but so far season two has been so good because it's given us a lot of moments like this. Uh, and, and I just, I loved it. I had, I had a great time with it. Uh, what I didn't have a great time with and wouldn't have a great time with if I had to be a part of it is a uh, blood drinking ceremony. We're back to the Samburu tribe. We're back to Bonface, uh, the most attractive man I've ever seen in my life. Um, and uh, this is where they they do celebrations. They don't always kill. I think it was cows that they were slaughtering, right? They don't always kill them. But when they do, they eat everything, including the fat to the meat. Uh, they even use their blood and they mix it with milk and they celebrate the kill with this milk blood. I, like, I would rather have just blood than have blood with, mixed with milk. I'd then, rather drink its piss, to be honest. I would honestly rather probably drink its piss. Uh, no, actually, that's not true. Yeah, I'll leave you to that one. But d- the like blood, just the metallic taste of it is just... I, I, I find it hard to believe that the people in the tribe don't gag when they do this. You know what I mean? Like, like how are they it's okay warm, with too. it? It's not like it's refrigerated. You ever have warm milk? It's oh, disgusting. Warm milk and warm blood and like... Uh, I just, right out I can, of its... They right out of its body too. Like they don't even give it time to cool. Yeah, I don't think it could cool. Right? It's like right, right in Africa. Like it's it's gonna be pretty hot out there. Um, um. Uh, although it does get kind of cold at, at night there sometimes. But this is a, a, a kind of a disgusting portion of it. Stevo and Pontius and and Wee Man are all there to take part in the festivities and the celebrations. Part of me believes to my core that Stevo put some of that honey booze into this mixture. Like I, I have to believe that that he did that. I, I would like be it a, if he that did. would be a veteran move. It would be a really much a very much a veteran move. Wee Man though has what I think is the moment of the episode in this one, where he's uh, he takes a sip. Pontius is gagging immediately. Stevo's gagging immediately. Wee Man gags a little bit, but then he looks at the tribe and he's like, "No, don't worry, guys. I think I can hold it. Maybe." Maybe. <laughs> nope and just gets up and starts vomiting like just step by step gets the exactly where you know he's gonna end up he was so confident in the beginning and you just see that confidence waning with every beat that goes so by good. until he's vomiting some of the tribes people some of the samburu tribe are are laughing at them some of them are just like i don't know why we invited these people here um um but it was it was great did you did your gag reflex kick in for this one Big time. It Big did time. It? i hate yeah. milk i hate milk the blood doesn't bother me it's the milk the, the the milk is what caught you in this one? Yeah, I hate milk, man. Milk grosses me out. So what would you rather drink? A cup of this milk or a cup of the blood? A cup of the blood. Are you kidding me? Are you yeah, serious? Yeah, warm milk, especially warm milk right out of the fucking udder. Like, that's disgusting. That, no. Just grosses me out. That is like, baffling to me. Because one of them is, like, meant to be drank. And the other is meant to keep your body alive. Like, it's blood. Well, it's it works for vampires. It's going to work for me. 
Okay, there's a lot to peel back the curtain on that one. I, I net like I look, do suck your blood. you don't wake up in the morning, you stay up all night, you say you'd rather drink milk than <laughs> or blood than milk. Uh, I, I'm putting all this together. Jesus Christ. We we cap off the ceremony after all the wild boys have basically puked their guts out. Pontius looks at the camera. He looks around to everyone. He says, the ceremony's going great. And that, just to punctuate all the vomiting, was, was a very nice touch to end off the clip. And to end off the episode, Chris, all in all, that's season two, episode three of Wild Boys, uh, Kenya. What did you think of the episode as a whole? Well, just based on that little rant that you just did about me potentially being a vampire, I think that's a good, like, clickbaity title. For this video, how did how did Wild Boys season two episode three confirm that Chris is is actually a vampire? <laughs> if that doesn't get people to click, I don't know what will. You know what sucks is the attention span of people on the online now is so low that you would have lost them after six words of that sentence. You need yeah, the true. vampire needs to be like the first word of that, otherwise no one's paying attention. It is we ah, suck. We suck as we a species. Suck. If you are a vampire, please convert me because I don't want to be a part of this this human uh world anymore. Um, you know what doesn't suck? What's that? This episode. This episode this didn't suck episode. at all. But I you know what it. you know what does suck? My blood? Vampires. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, Chris, why don't you lead us off with the MVPs and LVPs of this episode? Uh, there are so many potential MVPs. I'm curious to see where your thoughts are here. Ooh. I, I think I'm going with Wee Man. Wee Man had some Great serious choice. gold serious Great gold choice. this episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to get a little sprinkle in the, some of the other cast. Sometimes they come in. It's like, what are you doing there? Yeah. I, I just want to see the Wild Boys. And... He was a catalyst to a lot of good things in this episode. I agree. And he was game the whole time. I, mm-hmm. I think Wee Man was a great performer in this one. My MVP, how how can it not be Bondface? It's it's yeah. it's Bondface for sure. Uh for making me question everything I thought I knew about myself just by being on camera for about thirty five seconds. Um, yeah, like he made me want to change my pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gender fluid oh, now that's amazing uh look you you soften chris's heart bond face uh, and you could probably uh spear it from across the sahara uh as well he he looks like he he knows his way around uh uh, uh that warrior spirit uh bond face is my mvp chris what about your lvp the cow the cow yeah why he got his blood and piss and his cum drinking <laughs> Where did the cum factor into any of this? Well, that's why. That's why I don't like milk. To me, it's just like big cum shots. Wait a second, Chris. Th- that they're not coming out of the same place. It, but it looks like a wiener. And and by definition, by definition, it can't be cum because only cows, females, can can give milk. Okay, so her squirt juice. Her oh, squirt maybe I would juice. like it actually. But <laughs> it's just like. The fact that you just like pull on something that looks like a dick and uh-huh. white liquid comes out of inside this beastly smelly animal's body and you're like, uh-huh. yo, I'm gonna drink that. What if you milked Bonface? Would you drink it? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay, so Chris is I don't know would if you- I would drink it, but I would splatter it all over my flake. Oh, okay, you know? okay. I yeah, think a lot yeah. of people would pay to see that. Um um <laughs> Start sending out my OnlyFans. <laughs> Seriously. Me and Bond face. If I say the only problem is if I set up an OnlyFans, I would have only one fan and it would probably be mom and dad to support me just a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's it. That was weird. That's not wrong. They would support me, I think. Actually, no, they're not even a Patreon. They don't even they're, support the... Yeah, yeah exactly. they, 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 they have never listened to an episode of any of my podcasts, so that if, can't be the, true. If all of a sudden they really started supporting your OnlyFans, that even though would they never be support anything else, that, that would, would be, be questionable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. My LVP is going to be the hippos, uh, because I, I think that uh, uh, they they had a chance to show their prowess to tear apart that Steve-O blow-up doll, and they just kind of let it swim around. They ceded their territory... <laughs> To a, a freaking blow up doll, uh, and 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 just kind of let it do its thing. I was disappointed. I wanted to see some some action there, and and we we got none of it. I'm tr- I'm changing my LVP because I really wasn't thinking. I just threw something out there randomly. Okay, my LVP is Westerners for allowing all these Africans to be pranking us this entire time, making it's a good us point. think hippos were scary, making us think tribes actually like stick their hands into bee infested things. <laughs> we are Stab the each other with bees of this episode. Clamp each other's nipples with 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 uh, ants. Yeah, no, I agree. They they definitely. Yeah. They 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 pulled one over on us 100. Maybe 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 Wakanda they're the MVPs is real too. And th- th- they're definitely the MVPs. Maybe Wakanda is real and they just come out and put on this this Bond face and pretend that they live a certain way, but really they're just they're just having their way with us and and all of our uh, opinions on them. So good good on them for for running us through the ringer. I, I that theory 
100% rings true. And I, I hope that I find out at some point it actually was true. Uh, regardless, though, Chris, I had a, a, an absolute blast. Any predictions on where we're going next week? Somewhere wild. Somewhere wild. I'm going to guess somewhere cold. I'm going to say like Antarctica or oh, something like that. I'm going to say, do we have to do Argentina? I don't remember. If we haven't, I pick Argentina. Okay, there we go. Going to South America or Antarctica. Patagonia. Patagonia. That's, I, uh, they, buy some buy some uh, some nice hiking gear, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're just in a retail store for Patagonia. That'd be good. All right, well, that's it. That's all the time we have for today. Uh, uh, as always, thanks for listening. You can find us on all of our socials at jackasspod or jackasspod at gmail.com. Uh, send us all your thoughts and prayers and well wishes there. Bye. I'm Mikey Aaronworth. Bye. I'm Chris Aaronworth. And this has been Jackass. Furnished by Sad Styles Productions. Get into it!